The modern turbine engine is a masterpiece of engineering, but its roots stretch back over 2,000 years. In this video, we'll explore the full timeline of turbine engine development, from ancient Greek steam experiments to the jet age and beyond. Our journey begins in ancient Alexandria. Between 100 and 200 BC, an Egyptian mathematician and philosopher named Heron, or Hero, built a device known as the Yalapile, the world's first known reaction engine. By heating water in a closed vessel and channeling the resulting steam through two opposing nozzles on a rotating sphere, Hero created rotational motion using steam thrust. Did he use this to power machines? We don't know, but what we do know is that this simple device demonstrated the same fundamental principle behind today's jet engines. Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In the 1200s AD, the Chinese made another leap using the reaction principle, not for machinery, but for warfare. By mixing charcoal, sulfur, and saltpeter, potassium nitrate, they created black powder, the basis of solid fuel rockets. By 1230 AD, records show that these rockets were used in battle, launched as weapons. Though rudimentary, this was one of humanity's first practical uses of controlled propulsion. In 1629, Italian engineer Giovanni Branca designed one of the earliest steam-powered machines. His system used a sealed vessel of water heated by solid fuel. Steam escaped through a nozzle and struck an impulse wheel, causing it to rotate. That will turn a series of gears to perform mechanical tasks like grinding or sawing. While the device was never widely adopted, it's considered a conceptual ancestor of modern gas turbines and turbo superchargers showcasing early use of reactive steam power for rotation. In 1687, Sir Isaac Newton published his third law of motion, forming the theoretical basis for jet propulsion. Later, scientist Gravensade built a jet-powered model vehicle based on Newton's law. He mounted a watertight sphere on a carriage and heated the water inside. As steam was ejected rearward, thrust was produced to propel the vehicle forward. The concept worked in theory, but the design was too heavy and underpowered. No record exists of this vehicle operating successfully. In 1900, Dr. Sanford A. Moss, while studying for an engineering degree, wrote a thesis on the gas turbine. Years later, in 1918, working for General Electric, he developed the first gas turbine device for aircraft, the turbo supercharger for reciprocating engines. This invention helped solve the high-altitude performance limitations of piston aircraft and laid the foundation for the materials science needed for future gas turbines. In the early 1930s, Frank Whittle, a cadet at the Royal Air College, wrote a thesis advocating the use of gas turbines for aircraft propulsion. He saw potential in lightweight gas turbines where the ram effect of air at high speeds could assist performance. In 1930, he patented the first turbojet aircraft engine, featuring a centrifugal compressor, multiple combustion cans, and a turbine, well similar to Moss's turbo supercharger. From 1930 to 1935, Whittle struggled for funding, but political unrest in Europe revived interest. In 1936, with private investors, he formed Power Jets Limited. By April 12, 1937, his prototype engine successfully ran on a test stand producing about 3,000 shaft horsepower. This design would power the Gloucester E2839, which flew in May 1941 at 400 miles per hour using a W1 engine producing 1,000 pounds of thrust. Whittle's biggest challenge was materials. It took him three years to build a combustor that could handle the heat, eventually requiring 10 combustion chambers. He later worked on the W2, which powered the twin-engine Meteor jet, the first turbofan patent, and proposals for supersonic engines and turboprops. But due to lack of funding and support, Whittle stepped away from turbine development, though his ideas would later be realized. In 1936, German engineer Hans von Ohain presented a gas turbine design to the government and received substantial funding. Working with the Heinkel Company, he developed the Itch ES 3B engine, producing 1,100 pounds of thrust. In August 1939, the Heinkel Itch E-178 made the first jet-propelled flight in history. Von Ohain's engine was a centrifugal flow design, developed independently of Whittle 
and later evolved into the axial flow configurations that define today's high-performance engines. By 1942, Germany flew the Messerschmitt ME-262, powered by Junker and later BMW axial flow engines, each producing about 2,000 pounds of thrust. However, these engines required hot section overhauls every 10 to 15 hours due to less advanced metallurgy compared to British counterparts. Meanwhile, Italy's Caproni Campini jet aircraft, powered by a piston-engine-driven compressor, flew in 1939 but was eventually deemed impractical, just as Whittle had predicted in his 1929 thesis. In 1941, U.S. General H.H. H. Happ, Arnold visited England and saw Whittle's work firsthand. He returned with an engine and contracted General Electric to develop it. By April 1942, GE had a running G1A turbojet. Bell Aircraft was chosen to build America's first jet, the XP-59 Aerocomet, powered by two G1A engines. It first flew in October 1942, producing 1,250 pounds of thrust per engine. Though not used in combat, it served as a trainer for the P-80. In 1948, the Vickers Viscount became the first turboprop airliner. In 1949, the de Havilland Comet, the world's first turbojet-powered commercial aircraft, made its maiden flight. However, by 1954, it was grounded due to structural fatigue and decompression at altitude. It was later reintroduced after redesigns. In the U.S., Boeing invested heavily in jet transport development. In 1958, the 707 entered service, powered by military-based Pratt & Whitney engines, marking a new era in commercial aviation. In 1966, Boeing proposed the Boeing 2707, a Mach 2.8, 300 passenger supersonic airliner with 4G4 engines producing 68,000 pounds of thrust each. However, due to environmental concerns, mainly regarding ozone depletion, Congress pulled funding and the project ended in 1971. In 1976, the British-French Concorde entered service, cruising near Mach 2.0, powered by Rolls-Royce Olympus turbojets. It was retired in 2003 after decades of supersonic travel. Two major propulsion milestones include the Europrop TP400, an eight-bladed 11,000-shaft horsepower turboprop, the largest ever built, and the GE unducted fan, a prop fan engine tested in 1986 on a Boeing 727 to improve fuel efficiency. Meanwhile, very light jets emerged, small jets with two turbofan engines, seating four to six people, cruising at 400 to 500 miles per hour, each engine weighing about 100 to 200 pounds and producing 800 to 1,500 pounds of thrust. From large wide bodies to regional jets and business VLJs, the turbine engine dominates modern aviation. While early innovation was funded by militaries, today's development is largely private sector-led. The aviation industry now faces new challenges, meeting stricter FAA and EPA regulations on noise and emissions. Still, history shows us engineering will rise to meet them. Thanks for watching.